Thanks so much for staying with us. City Councilman Ben Kalos is here now. He says closing the digital divide is one of his top priorities. And Elizabeth John is the executive director of Power My Learning. Thanks to both of you for being here. Let's start with you, Ms. John. So talk to me about your organization. You recognize the digital gap was a serious issue back in 1999, and your organization tries to close it. How? We think that the most important people in a child's education are their teachers and their parents. And we think technology can really help enhance education for children. But students need access um, to both hardware and to broadband in order to do that. And everyone needs training. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there, especially for education, that can really transform a classroom or home. But they won't be able to do it if they don't have the proper training. So we invest in training for teachers, training for families, and also providing computers to families as well. Right, you're in about 26 schools in New York City, Yes, right? we are. So is the situation overall getting better or worse in your view? I think that the situation is getting better, but technology is advancing very quickly. So it's sometimes hard to keep up. So every time you feel like you've made strides, technology has changed again. And you don't want folks to be feeling like they're left behind. So it feels like there's a, a constant effort needed to continually bridge this gap. Right. Councilman, you wear two hats in all of this. You are a software developer and you're a city councilman representing the Upper East Side. So first of all, did we see this coming or what? It shouldn't have been a surprise to anyone who was a software developer. So, so third hat, I'm a fan of the show, and it's <laughs> great to be here. Thank you. Uh, but absolutely. And uh, back in 2009, when uh, the city was negotiating a monopoly over who was going to give cable, we had an opportunity to make sure that we got affordable broadband for any low-income New Yorker. We missed the mark in 2009, but we did get a bite at the Big Apple uh, in uh, 2016. And thankfully, because of Spectrum, we were able to bring in Spectrum Internet Assist. And now about 1.2 million children uh, who are on free and reduced school lunch and seniors who are very low income will have access to low, uh, to, to low cost, high speed internet. That's wonderful. And of course, they are the parent comp charter is the parent company, so we applaud that effort. But no one can do it all, right? The city has to step in, the state has to step in, the federal government. This has to be uh, an effort across the board. A absolutely. And so I think one key thing from the federal government is we need to make sure we preserve net neutrality. Something that the previous administration wanted to do is they wanted to, A, they already did, they created this as a utility. The internet should be a utility just like power or water. And what they wanted to do is say that this would be something called lifeline which would provide uh, federal subsidies just like on the uh, what people call Obama phones. You can get a cell phone that gets a subsidy from the companies if you're low income and we wanted to do that with broadband and so the federal government can do it. Uh, the state can also do it but we as a city should as part of any time we give somebody a monopoly whether it's a wireless provider uh, or a phone provider they should also have to do uh, affordable internet just like Spectrum. Right and this affects the way students learn correct? Absolutely I think um, everything is online now. Um, students are expected to do their homework online um, and you hear these stories about students who are sitting outside of libraries or schools trying to do their homework on the leftover Wi-Fi on their cell phones. Um, so that's still happening today and it's kind of mind-boggling to those who have technology at home, um, but that isn't true for everyone. But just to echo what you were saying, I think there's a lot of effort happening here, so it's about everyone working together. So you need government, you need uh, companies like Charter, you need nonprofits, you need schools, libraries. Um, everyone has a different angle and strength that they can bring to the table, and I think the only way you're going to solve this issue is if we're all working together. Right, but Councilman, more than 700,000 New Yorkers in this city do not have broadband. 700,000 is a big number. Yeah, yeah, and when you break it down, half of those people are in the Bronx and Brooklyn. In fact, uh, one quarter of the households in Brooklyn uh, don't have broadband. And when you get to the Bronx, that's one in three houses. It's, it's one third. And so that's why having uh, affordable broadband uh, is so important. And uh, I'm really hoping that, especially when you talk about kids, uh, it's, it's when you're talking about income inequality and now there's this homework gap, uh, how are kids ever going to 
uh, achieve income equality, especially if you're coming from a low-income home that doesn't even have broadband, uh, how does that happen? You start off behind, and we need to make sure that all of the kids have affordable broadband. So the Spectrum Internet Assist will actually make sure that about 800,000 children on free and reduced school lunch in the city will be able to get it at home for $14.99 a month. And uh, I agree, and it's the role of government to make sure we expand it beyond Spectrum, but right now it's the only program out there. Well, any bills pending in the city council? So one of the problems we've run into is... Uh, Y you're right, we shouldn't be putting all the pressure on Spectrum, which we have. Uh, there's a company out there called Verizon, and they were supposed to give fiber to everyone in the city, but they didn't. And so now the city, led by Mayor de Blasio, has actually sued Verizon to bring fiber to people's homes because they still haven't. And so I'm hoping that we as a city can force Verizon to give affordable broadband to low-income New Yorkers because of the fact that they didn't meet their obligation to get broadband for our city. Well, it's one of the reasons why we're proud to work for Spectrum, because they did meet the obligation and they're helping so many people ahead. What about digital readiness? Is technology unfolding at a pace faster than some people are able to embrace? We'll talk about that on the other side of the break.